Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us today on our webinar with Shaw and Ava talking about HR learning environments and camera tracking. My name is Andrew Francis. I'm the Applications Engineering Manager at Shaw in the UK, and here we have Chris from Ava. Thanks very much for hosting today, Andrew. My name is Chris Godsalf, and I'm the Channel Sales Manager at Ava UK in Ireland, and I'm responsible for our Pro AV and IPE education portfolio. Um, obviously, we're going to be showcasing today our Pro AV cameras with combined with Shaw's MXA microarrays with our PTZ Link software. So, moving on to the agenda. Excellent. Well, just to show you quickly, I've now nudged on the PTZ camera, so we have automatically triggered our camera to focus on me based upon a active gating trigger within the microphone, which then turns the camera into an automatic tracking system. That is correct, Andrew. So if I now start speaking, you will see that the, tra the tracking camera automatically pans onto myself. And obviously we can set multiple different presets within the camera software for PTZ Link, which will allow you to obviously set time delays accordingly where uh, you need to set the, uh, the camera preset recall for wherever someone is speaking within a, within a room, within a training environment or within a classroom. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Chris. Well, let's get into the agenda. Uh, we'll do a quick overview of what camera tracking is and what it aims to achieve. Then we'll look at how it applies to the hybrid uh, learning and working environments. Then we'll do a bit of detail on which of our systems we're using in the demonstration here today and how you can pick different parts of each company's portfolio to build the correct system for your needs. Uh, and then at the end, we'll look at some Q&A. Uh, just as a point of note, the Q&A section is active on the right-hand side of the GoToWebinar platform. Put your questions in there, and at the end, we'll go through them and answer them in as best we can. So our system today here for the system that we're going to demonstrate uses an MXA 910 array in the ceiling up above us here. Uh, we have that running over a Dante network into a P300 and then in, into a conferencing system. Uh, tagged onto that is a AVA camera and we have a software link between the command strings coming out of the MXA 910 and into the PTZ link software which is driving the camera tracking uh, and more on that a bit later. Um, a bit of detail about the product. So the MXA 910 is the flagship microphone in our conferencing platform. It's got up to eight individual zones or lobes as we call them for picking up audio. And then when those areas are determined to be active, the microphone will, or the processor will select those and trigger the camera preset recall. We can use more than one microphone in a system with the PTZ Link software, which means we can scale up and do actually some quite large systems. Definitely. So uh, in terms of PTZ Link and obviously with the MXA series of uh, microarrays, you can pair up to five microarrays with one camera. So that will allow you to scale up to town hall and auditorium environments. Lovely. When you're scaling up, uh, the P300 conferencing processor allows you to take the auto mixed output from each array and then bring those together, which is where the, the kind of centralized processing box for scaling up the audio to a, a larger system when you need more than one array to fit the audience size. Um, if you are using a software-based codec in a, a Teams or a Zoom Rooms environment, then you could replace the P300 with the IntelliMix Room software, which gives some added benefits as well in terms of our new AI denoiser feature, which is very cool at getting rid of some of the more annoying noises that people make in meetings like keyboard clacking and, and pen clicking and, and crockery and stuff like that to make your audio as, as high quality as possible. That sounds really, really interesting. It is. So Chris, tell us a little bit more about what PTZ Link software is and what it aims to achieve. So PTZ Link software is the only software in the market currently that will support a number of different Shaw microphones with our professional cameras. Um, we have obviously partnered with Shaw as an alliance partner to deliver best in uh, obviously uh, class experience for delivering audio and video technology solutions. Um, with our PTZ Link software, you all, all, need, all you need to do is simply download the application from our website onto a Windows 10 based PC, Nook or Mac, and obviously you're up and running simply and uh, intuitive web interface uh, to utilize that when, uh, when setting up meetings for voice and audio tracking. 
And that PC can be hosting IntelliMix Room software and Avis PTZ Link at the same time? Yes, you can. Obviously, you need to run in the background, obviously, uh, to ensure that voice tracking and audio tracking is taking place. But it's a great intuitive, um, obviously, software platform that is free of charge and uh, obviously is a nice value add that we offer as a, as a vendor. Excellent. Um, so some benefits here of the PTZ Link software and Shure's microphones and processing running at the same time is you get the audio based tracking based upon who's actually talking in the room. So normally to do that, you would need a camera director who's monitoring what's going on and, and moving the camera uh, appropriately. And then somebody else in a manual environment doing that vision mixing. Um, but with the PTZ Link software, you can take that manual element away and run it a bit more automatically. Definitely, Andrew. So obviously with the PTZ Link software, you can simply obviously download that from our website. As I said, that's totally free of charge. And then once it's downloaded and it's running on a, an onboard PC or via a, via a Mac, if you're looking to go down a bring your own device uh, type scenario, you've got the ability then to obviously uh, have that running in the background and no need for further any additional setups or obviously uh, configuration once it's on and up and running then you're up and running within the uh, the meeting room, the lecture hall, or the training room. And one thing we've seen in the past is that it's actually quite labor intensive and difficult for people to get traditional camera tracking systems up and running. But with the PTZ Link software and the Shores um, command strings, it's very quick and very simple. That is correct, Andrew. So you can set up the uh, PTZ Link uh, software and obviously set the presets within the software within about 10 minutes. Uh, you don't need the programmer and you don't need to be uh, a brain surgeon to obviously set up the, uh, the software application and set the pre, uh, preset recall. Uh, according to the uh, the room type and the room size. Uh, with our um, PTZ Link app, it's obviously supported by uh, Windows uh, Windows 10 and Mac, obviously version 7, 8, uh, 8.1, 10, and also Mac version 10.14 or later. Um, the basic setup for PTZ Link, as I said, is you need a Windows-based operating system, which offers uh, obviously Intel uh, Core 2 Duo, uh, CPU or higher. So that's and a then, very low barrier to entry here. It's a very underspec PC, really. Definitely, definitely. We wanted to make it as easy as possible for our uh, obviously integration uh, community and also for the end users when it comes to setting up the system. Um, reality is, as I said, ease of use and making and creating the best user experience when leveraging the power of our video conferencing solutions and our Pro AV with the Shure Audio solution. It's a really, really nice, neat solution that is easy to use if you're working within, uh, obviously, uh, education environment, legal, finance. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a one size fits all. And we can see here on our supported models, both from Ava and Shaw, that you do have a lot of choice. So you're not limited to having a mic in the ceiling. If a mic being on the wall would be more appropriate, then you can use the 710, you can use the 310 on the table. And of course, the Ava cameras have got different zoom ratios in their lenses, so you can pick the correct uh, device that, for your application. That is correct, Andrew. So we uh, obviously offer lots of flexibility in terms of the models that our PTZ Link software is compatible with. And obviously that can be paired with, as I said, the MXA uh, 910 and the MXCW and the MXW range with uh, your IntelliMix P300 DSP. Excellent. Setup wise, it's very simple. You have your little application that you've talked about getting access from the website. Once you've installed that, you make some pairing of command strings and IP addresses, set your camera presets and you can get it up and running. Um, I think we're actually going to demonstrate that in a short while, aren't we, to really kind of show you how quick it is to set up a functioning camera system um, with these devices. Quickly, we'll show it through in the PowerPoint and then we'll do it for real and then we can see which one takes longer. <laughs> so once you've set up your system in its IP addressing and you've got everything all up and running and communicating on the same subnet, it's as simple as setting up the load positions of the MXA 910, 710 or 310 checking that the people are triggering the right areas, and then associating the microphone with your IP camera, and then you're up and running. Pretty it's, much it, isn't it's it? It's that simple. Re reality is, as I said earlier, you all, all you need to do is drop in the IP address of the camera and the IP address of the uh, MXA, MXCW, or the MXW range of uh, microphones from Shaw, and then obviously they then go in and set the uh, recall presets within the, uh, the eight different lobes if you're using an MXA 910, and then uh, you're already up and running. Uh, there will be an emblem on the uh, 
web user interface where you can kind of see where the voice tracking, obviously what lobe that's coming out of in terms of the channels. So that's what you utilize to set the presets. So it's that simple. Okay, let's have a little refresher of what the components of our system are and we'll then show you how quickly it is to add a new preset to the ones you've already seen. So microphone wise, we're using the MXA 910 mounted in the ceiling. That's commu communicating over Dante to the P300 and then into our Teams PC. And then from the camera, we've got the AVA PTZ310. Then we're gonna set up the PTZ Link software and get it all communicating together. Sounds good, Andrew. Thank all you. right. So I'm going to switch my screen now to show the setup of the PTZ Link software. So here we've got presets one and two, which we've already seen throughout our presentation this morning. Uh, and before we got to here, we just need to make some associations between the microphone and the camera. So the icons here are helpful because the camera's IP address on our network is 192.168.1.168. The credentials for it are preset out of the factory, or you can choose your own. We've simply uh, set up admin as the, uh, the user account, and obviously the password is admin straight out of the box. For this, uh, obviously, uh, webinar and scenario, we've gone with the camera model that we're using for today's webinar. Awesome. Um, the microphone's IP address is 192.168.1.20 on its control IP, and then finally, just some friendly name at the bottom. So that's all set up as a global parameter. And now, if we open up the browser of the 192.168.1.168, we get to the camera configuration page. Great. So what we're going to do, over in the corner of our set here, we've got a little demonstration booth part. So Chris, do you want to go and sure. take, take where we're going to move the shot to? Uh, I will manually set our camera to this position. And here we go. This is looking pretty nice, I think. Uh, and then what we're going to do is save this as a new preset number three. All right, so that's the, that's the position that we're going to recall. And then just so we can see what's happening from an audio point of view, I'm going to bring this back out to the Oh, sorry, bring it back out to the middle. We can kind of see both of us. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough. Now in the microphone, we need to have a channel pointed at you for the camera to then talk to. Okay? That is correct, yes. So if we look at our configuration page here, here's channel number one and channel number two, and we're gonna add a third one, which is put it here. This is not where Chris is stood. So we'll use the auto position algorithm to actually find him in the room. So Chris, would you mind telling us what you've got on your stand over there? So to the left of me, I've got all the components that you need to set up a working example of the voice tracking solution without um, PTZ link. Excellent, right, that's enough for now because we can see the microphone has determined that you are in this position, which is excellent. And now we've got that information, we can just tell the camera to recall that preset when you are talking over there. So if I start talking now, you can see to the left of me, we have... So channel number three would recall preset number three, and then we turn the PTZ link on here. And now we should be able to see all three things happening at once where I'm talking in preset number two. Chris, you can talk in preset number now three. Now if I start talking for preset number three, the camera should automatically pan to myself and you'll see beside me to my left all the components that you need to set up the existing voice tracking and audio tracking within a meeting room, classroom or training room. Excellent, and if I continue the conversation back over in position number one, that is how easy it is to set up a link between a AVA PTZ camera utilizing Shaw's uh, automatic mixer and tying the two together. Great stuff, Andrew. So uh, that is all you need in terms of setting up a basic preset within the uh, obviously PTZ link software. And um, obviously we're gonna move up onto the uh, configuration setup for PTZ link. Excellent. If you were to use a different uh, microphone choice for your scenario, you know, maybe like a council chamber, um, they typically use something more like a push to talk system. That in our product range is the MXCW. So the delegate units all would have their own place on a table, and then you can have up to 125 of those in a system. And how many preset recalls can you do in your PTZ system? So currently within the uh, preset recalls, you can control and set up to, um, 
20 channels. There are a new uh, premium version of PTZ Link launching, and that will allow you to uh, configure up to 200 channels moving forward. All right, so the 200 channel version in the not too distant future will pair perfectly with our 125 channel conferencing system. Perfectly. Lovely. Um, at this point, we've given you some information and some demonstrations on how to set up the equipment in a technical way. Uh, but we've also got an end user who represents the London School of Economics. And he's going to have a quick chat with our colleague, Karis, and you can hear about how it's being used in the real world. So, Karis, let's hear from you, please. Hi, I'm Karis Green from Shaw UK, and I'm a regional sales manager with a specific interest in looking after our clients in higher education. So with regard to our webinar, looking at Shaw, working with AVA camera tracking for hybrid working and learning environments, I'm here today with Jim Osborne from the London School of Economics. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about a project that uh, we've been working on with Shaw, AVA and LSE to deliver a hybrid learning solution. Uh, Jim, can you tell us a little bit about your role and the programme that you work on? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Karis. Um, so I'm the programme manager for the Executive MSc in Cities. Um, it's a master's programme uh, for experienced working, um, for experienced urban professionals who uh, want to better understand and make uh, changes happen in their cities. Um, we're a modular program, so instead of teaching, you know, our students over the course of a year, you know, um, every week, we actually do all our teaching in big kind of modules, kind of big week-long modules with kind of quite long teaching days. And so what happened to us really is that when the pandemic hit, um, we found that not only were there the lockdowns, which caused a lot of disruption, but a lot of our students who are actually often based overseas weren't able to travel into the UK. So we wanted to switch over to a hybrid um, approach and give the students a lot more flexibility um, about how they attended the program. And this is something we're calling hybrid flex. One of the big challenges, I think, moving over to hybrid was the sound quality. Um, the kind of standard solutions that you see out there, especially in higher education, the sound is pretty impressive, especially when you're trying to capture a room full of people. But it isn't really designed to be sat on for five or six hours at a stretch. And so I think that's something that we really kind of uh, wanted to uh, improve on. Um, so this is something, and so this is really why we ended up kind of uh, working with Shaw um, on the system that we have now. Great, yeah, that makes sense. So when you first started speaking to Shaw uh, about the solution, there were a few challenges. Do you mind explaining what these were? Yeah, sure. So it seems quite simple in a way that we wanted to have a system where everyone, where all the students could have their own microphone because we wanted to make the barrier between the people in the room and the people um, attending remotely um, kind of to go away as much as possible. We wanted to reduce that down. We thought that the ideal way to do it would be to have individual delicate mics for each student, but we don't have rooms that we are in all the time. So there was never really the possibility of having a wide system um, to kind of offer that. And there really aren't that many um, options out there to go full wireless, which is something we established quite early on that we needed. Um, and I think that's kind of where, especially the Microflex Complete wireless kind of was immediately a good option for us because it has such scalability. I mean, we're using 20 units at the moment, but we could go up to a lot more than that in the future um, if, if it's something that we decided we needed. Um, then the other thing was that, um, you know, there, was, there aren't really that many out of the box tracker, um, camera tracking systems. So again, this is something that we um, thought by combining the Microflex wireless complete with the P300, we were actually able to use an AVA PTZ camera to track the students in real time. Um, it's not 100% reliable, but it is about 98, 95, 95, 98% reliable. And as a result, it means that I can be there keeping an eye on the camera, keeping an eye on the sound, and only jumping in when I needed to. That sounds great. So what's the advantage of having a system like this installed on your campus? So, I mean, 
the big advantage for us is that then in a way it isn't installed on our campus in a kind of funny kind of way is because actually because it is um, all portable it means that it's boxed up out of the way when it isn't being used and then when it is we can teach on campus which is what we like to do you know this is we are an LSE program we want to have our students here on campus but we didn't want to be tied to campus we wanted to be able to go elsewhere so we now know that come you know as things begin to return to normal we will hopefully be able to continue using the spaces we like hopefully find better spaces and also be able to go off site and take our students um, on the road as it were so i think um, having this portable solution really works for us great and as the uh, pandemic hopefully continues to ease do you think this is a, a solution that you'll continue to use or or are things likely to go back to the way they were before? No, I mean, what we're really aiming for um, is to continue using this approach um, for the foreseeable future. And in fact, we want to make it a permanent feature of the programme. We found that there have been huge benefits to the approach we've taken. Um, it's partly from a structural perspective. Um, we're now using a blended learning approach instead of making our, instead of trying to, which means in practice for those of you outside of higher education means that, you know, instead of trying to cram all of the teaching with traditional lectures and seminars and tutorials um, into the space of five days, um, we can use that time that we have together kind of um, focus on discussion. So instead of having, um, you know, five days at a time where, you know, you might have eight to 10 hours of teaching, we now have, we take those five days and we have five to six hours of teaching, which is a lot more um which i think our students find a lot easier and they can because of that blended part of the pro that blended 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 part of the program the materials that they can access in advance they can actually digest the material um and in which is both more comfortable for them in a way but we've also seen improved learning outcomes so for us it's a very much a win fantastic um so shaw and ava partnered on this program with you, uh, how did you find working with both manufacturers? Um, everyone was very generous with their time. It was very, uh, it was really good to see. I think one of the challenges in that, with this, is that this was something that we hadn't that we hadn't really done before. So um, taking actually getting the MXCW to work with um, a PTZ camera um, through uh, Ava's PTZ link software was new. So everyone was very supportive and would send over articles and things and uh, make suggestions. But ultimately there was a, an element of sitting down and just trying to figure it out, which um, was certainly a bit of a learning curve. Right, well, it sounds like you, you got there eventually. Um, so is there, is there anything particular you say you'd learned from this deployment and, and what you'll take away from it? Yeah, I mean, I would say that hybrid is possible and it is possible to deliver hybrid education in a way in which everyone feels like they're getting a good experience um, and that I think the hybrid does offer huge opportunities um, for programs especially that are like mine I think it's uh, I, I guess in a way perhaps it's for the best that I didn't know quite how much time it would take to uh, get used to it and to set it up because perhaps it would have scared me off but I think it was absolutely worth it and it was um, it was certainly an, an, an upskilling experience, um, but now we're there, and once we get some time to document this, then I think uh, it's going to feel like something that's really paid off. Excellent. Um, and have you had any feedback from the uh, the lecturers and and the students that are using this this solution? Do you feel that that they're finding it easy to use when they walk into the classroom? Yes, I think so. Um, so I mean, uh, so the programme co-directors are uh, Dr. Philip Roder and Dr. Philip Savas. And, you know, they, they, they both like their technology. They're both very into this. They're quite invested. Um, but I think they've come away feeling very satisfied with what we've been able to deliver. And these are people with pretty high expectations. In fact, as a team, I think we all have very high expectations. So I, in a way, I wasn't too worried about them getting the hang of it. But what I've also found is that when we have other lecturers who perhaps don't use this system as often, or perhaps who don't do as much hybrid teaching, they've come in and you know you can see the kind of look of nervousness on their face and perhaps in the first minute or two of uh, their sessions. But it's amazing how quickly they settle into it, which I think is in a way kind of one of those signs. It's like, yes, this is a system that we like and we think works. Um, 
and really I haven't seen anything else out there that is portable, that is scalable, um, that does all the things that it does. So, you know, I think what we've got is a pretty unique offer. So you operating the system have needed to upskill, which you've said has actually been a good experience, but for the end users, do you feel it is quite intuitive? Well, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think pretty much, I think the technology is so simple. I mean, we have will willowed it down so they press a button when they talk and press a button when they want to stop talking. You know, I can't really um, think of how much we could make it easier. I mean, even the, you know, now we've affected like the sound processing within the P300. Um, so even if somebody's talking, you know, right into the microphone, only a couple of inches away, they'll still sound okay. So, you know, you don't even have to necessarily teach them how to use a microphone in advance. Um, so then really, I think what that's allowed us to do, because the audio does just work, it's actually allowed us to focus on the kind of other aspects of the other challenges of remote and hybrid teaching, which are nothing to do with the sound, which is great, because actually that's you know, where we perhaps need to work, because we have the reassurance that the sound is definitely the one thing that we can be happy with. And I think, yeah, if if the sound and the camera tracking is working for you then you've got more opportunity to concentrate on the actual subject matter of of the program that you're delivering uh, so really appreciate your time jim uh to talking to us today and, and working with us on this project uh before we close off is there, is there anything else you feel you need to add no i don't think so it's been a great experience working with the shore team and with the ava team and um, i'm sure there's going to be plenty of annoying or uh, annoying of e plenty of annoying emails coming from me at some point in the next uh, you know coming months anyway as I come up with like oh why don't we do this and uh, you know Karis or Chris will have to come back to me and say no no Jim you can't <laughs> that's just a silly idea well they won't say oh. it like that they're always very supportive but you know perhaps yeah. sometimes urge me to reconsider well you never know anything's possible and you know if you've got ideas of how you want to use the system in the future we'd, we'd love to hear them and 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 work with you to see if if they can be achieved. So yeah, I'll say thank you again for your time and look forward to speaking with you again soon. Great stuff, thanks Karis. Thanks Karis and thanks Jim for that really interesting discussion there on how the London School of Economics have really taken on board this idea of a hybrid learning environment and the need for engaging content with camera tracking and audio you know, triggers for that conversation. Yeah, no, it's been great to be uh, part of the webinar today. Obviously, the last 18 months has taught us, uh, taught us a lot around, obviously, the demands of obviously delivering hybrid learning, training and working environments. And obviously, we've now got a solution in place with Shaw that will help you deliver a voice tracking, audio tracking solution that is scalable, innovative and uh, cost effective. Excellent. Right, we're coming to the end now. So let's take a quick look at the Q&As to see if anything's come through. And if, if we've got anything to add, we will answer it now. Hi, so now we're on to the Q&A section of the webinar. As you can see, uh, due to our friend COVID, we've had a switch around of who is in the studio and, and who is at home today. But uh, we've had a lot of questions come in, um, so we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, from the top, um, there was a question about what PC resources are required, and I have added uh, a list of these into the chat. But Chris, could you explain to us, can controls be added to touch panels? So in terms of our PTZ app 2, which is for our USB video conferencing solutions, uh, you can use an MTR um, with uh, with our video conferencing uh, solutions that utilize USB. So our CAM 520, our uh, VC 5, uh, 520, 540 series um, that our team certifies, you can use uh, an MTR device um, for uh, obviously control um, of the application. Um, within the ProAV um, space, they are teams compatible, uh, but they aren't team certified. Um, but you, we, they had been tested with a... Um, a Crestron Flex solution um, in uh, in HQ, and uh, obviously it works with the uh, with a Crestron and also the Extron controller solutions, as well as other third party uh, brands as well. Fantastic, thank in you. In terms of the system requirements for those Caris, um, all, all you need, as I, as I touched on previously, is a Windows 10 uh, or 11 uh, based uh, PC for the operating system, uh, with a minimum of an Intel Core 2 Duo. 
two gig of RAM. So it, it's bare minimum set up for the, uh, for the actual application itself. And it also works with Mac uh, version 10.14 or later. And again, same, same uh, parameters in terms of the system requirements for um, obviously Windows and for, uh, for Mac. Great. Um, so another question related to that, does the software report to the Teams admin center? For the service so in terms disabled. of the Teams admin centre, on the Pro AV lineup, because they are not Teams certified, um, they will not um, be picked up within the uh, within the Teams room. However, within the Cam Five Twenty and the USB range of uh, obviously cameras, they they will be able to be picked up um, on the Teams certified devices. And so we've had a couple of questions regarding using multiple cameras and or multiple microphones. I think they possibly came in, questions came in before that was covered in the webinar content. Um, but another question relating to that is, can we program the system to work in divisible rooms? Yes, most definitely, uh, Karis. So in terms of um, the standard uh, version of uh, PTZ Link, you can group or pair one camera with up to five mic arrays or vice versa. So you've got, you can split the uh, the room obviously into two or into three, depending on obviously the size of the room. And then all you need to do is pair the, uh, the camera to the individual mic arrays, depending on obviously where they're positioned within the space, and then set the presets accordingly against the uh, lobes if you're using the MXA 910, or depending on obviously uh, what, what kind of series of microphone you're using, that will depend on the configuration and, and obviously how, how to best use and pair the cameras with PTZ Link and the, uh, the relevant mic array solution. And in Hi. terms of obviously the, the camera switching um, element, we will be launching a premium version of uh, PTZ Link, which will allow you to uh, pair up to 25 um, obviously cameras with, with one mic array or vice versa. So that would obviously add to the flexibility and scale. So you can obviously pre-program for a larger campus or within a, within a larger space like an arena, auditorium, uh, town hall environment where, where you need that flexibility around the, uh, around the mic pickup with the MXA uh, series. Uh, within the premium version of the, uh, the software as well, um, that will allow you to uh, switch um, and also virtual virtual camera uh, within that uh, functionality and features as well. But would be more than happy to support any um, live demos at the rows or in person on on site to demonstrate the uh, the PTZ link application with with the Shure mic arrays and with our Ava Pro AV cameras. I think that's a really interesting development and update to the software that we can really expand out and make the system more scalable and more flexible. I'm looking forward to getting it up and running. Yeah. Definitely, um, so Andrew. Definitely. Here's a question for you, Andrew. Um, is the P300 required? Yes and no. It depends on the system deployment and how you're looking to manage some of the noise reduction and echo cancellation properties of your system. The MXA 910, 710 and 310 microphones all have their inbuilt own automatic mixer, which will output command strings based upon the active lobe. So if you're taking a single output from particularly a, a 910 or a 710, you wouldn't need the P300. You could take that Dante stream straight out uh, to an adapter, converting it to USB. Or if you're mixing more microphones together with the P300, then it's a good addition to the system. So really, you've got the command strings in the mics, in the P300, or the IntelliMix Room software DSP, and then you can decide which one of those is the most appropriate piece of software to take those command strings from. Thank you. All right. Um, so back to you, Chris. Um, a couple of people have asked, does the software need to be running all of the time, uh, i.e. on a server PC, or is it a case of using the software for configuration only? Um, so it would need to be run in the background all, all time in order to offer full voice tracking and audio tracking capabilities. So it could be run in a, a server room obviously within a rack and uh, obviously that's how you can uh, obviously leverage the power of uh, the PTZ link application, um, the basic and obviously the, uh, the new premium version once that launches in the not too distant future. It can be run on the same PC as hosting Teams or Zoom though, right? Because it's very, very low in processing power. 
Correct. Yes, it can, Andrew. Um, so you can leverage it on if you want to go down the BYOD route. Um, you could also, uh, add, as I said, download the application uh, in terms of the basic version free of charge from our website. And then it's a simple uh, 10 minute setup in terms of setting the uh, the IP address and the, uh, the camera, pairing those and syncing those within the software application and then going to going about setting the presets um, within within your within your device. So really good question, I thought here was um, how would the camera react if you were in an environment with um, perhaps a glass partition or windows behind you? Is there any issues with reflection or, or the lighting in your setting? So within our cameras, you can set the light saturation and obviously you can um, do that via our web UI. So simply dropping the, um, the IP address of the camera into your browser um, to set the light settings and the refraction in terms of um, obviously the, uh, the ambient light that's coming into the room. Alternatively, you can manage it through another free of charge software that we offer, which is PTZ Management Tool. That will also allow you to control up to 200 devices over the local area network, which again, you can set um, the parameters around the camera um, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the light, um, the lighting and obviously the, the focus. So uh, obviously it wouldn't be picked up. You can within a number of the cameras as well, set presets. So in our PTZ series and in our professional tracking cameras, you've got up to 255 presets. So you can set zones um, accordingly and something that we did with the uh, the London School of Economics and Politics with the cameras that they were deploying was because they had a ver variety of glass walls uh, within there and they didn't want to pick up the person as they walked past through the auto tracking functionality was to obviously set a, a, a kind of a dead zone so it wouldn't be picked up um, obviously and it wouldn't kind of uh, follow that person as they walked past on the auto tracking options. Uh, I'll add some extra detail here about the audio parameters. So I think relating to this question is what happens if you get false positives out of the auto mixer, which is then driving the camera tracking preset recall. Um, because we have automatic mixers in different areas of our product, so you've got an automatic mixer within the MXA mics and also another one within the P300, um, you can then set them up differently for different speeds. So you might set up the P300 to react quickly to sound nice for the voice reinforcement in the room, but then take the command strings out of the microphone and then the command strings in the microphone could be made to be less sensitive and react slower. And then you can put in some delay time so that false positives become less distracting. Clever stuff. Um, so on a similar point, um, what does the camera do when a person at the far end of a video call starts speaking? Can it pan out to be a more general shot of the room or is it gonna stay on its last preset while the person at the far end is speaking? So stay on the, uh, the original uh, person that was talking. Obviously, if the person on the far end um, at, at, at the end of the other end of the call is talking, um, then you can set a parameter or you can set a preset within the camera. Uh, that will pan or preset to the home page, um, and you can do that within the settings, uh, within the timings. So you have a pre. What we typically do in terms of our demos, and obviously for any requirements, you can set a parameter of um, five minutes to fifteen minutes in terms of when it defaults back to the uh, to the home uh, parameter, which will then give you a full view of the entire room. Um, typically, that's what we uh, advise people to do in terms of the setup. Great. Um so we have talked about using the software on uh, third party controllers. Is there an API available for the PTZ link software? At this point in time, um, there isn't, but it's something that has been requested with HQ. Um, so obviously they, they, it will be on the roadmap, um, but as to when that will be available moving forward, um, I, I do uh, obviously feed that back at a later date. Um, so still some more questions coming in. Um, if you have multiple rooms, can the config be downloaded and copied? So in terms of downloading and uh, uh, copying the, uh, the application, you need to run it on separate, um, PCs or, or, um, MTRs, depending on obviously what software you utilize. 
Um, unfortunately, it can't be um, copied over. Um, you'd need to run um, in each individual software um, on, a, on a dedicated uh, PC, Nook or, or Mac. From the sure point of view, you can take your room configuration of a microphone being in the room with this lobe configuration and sending its Dante's to a P300 and or loudspeakers. You can take that as a designer project and speed up the deployment of cookie cutter rooms, if the people like that term. Um, so you can get the audio bit moving quickly and then the setup of the ca over cameras is you know, the only extra step needed really. Thanks. Uh, so we have got an audience uh, from across Europe today and um, we've had an excellent question in terms of what's the general availability of the products mentioned. Um, is it available in all regions across Europe? So certainly from a short perspective, uh, all of these products also are sold across Europe. Is, is that the same for you, Chris? Definitely, Karis. So we've got uh, stock and availability across our local um, approved distribution partners on the Pro AV and the USB video conferencing solutions uh, that are compatible with PTZ Link and PTZ Adapt 2. And then we've also got um, across um, Europe, our, our, our friends in the Nordics, Germany, France have all got good stock holding as well. And we also have our centralized warehouse based out in the Netherlands um, that can deliver the, uh, the products in, 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 in very quick fashion. Excellent. Good to hear. Um, so we're coming up to nearly the end of our session now. Uh, there is a, a few more questions that haven't yet been answered, but I'm happy to respond to people directly after the webinar. Um, and uh, I think, as Chris mentioned in one of his responses, if anyone does have clients that require uh, live demos, then absolutely that's something we'd be happy to arrange. Um, and yeah, just like to say thank you to Ava for your involvement in this webinar today. Thank you to Andrew. Um, thank you to our, our guys behind the scene making this happen. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. Cheers now.